Warning. You've reached On The Box with great comfort and are now in a biblical truth zone. Place all questions about theology, current events, and evangelism on the box where they'll be weighed against the truth of God's Word. Ready your hearts and minds. You're about to be inspired and equipped to fulfill the Great Commission. Programming to engage in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Welcome to the Tuesday edition of On the Box, and Brad Snow is taking Keek a bit too far. <laughs> yes, he is. You know, he got me to start to Keek. And I, I haven't seen any Keeks from you. I've done one. You have? Yes, it was during uh, the whole solar eclipse. <sighs> Do you and, want your uh, phone up to the sun or something? No, you know what I did? You know what you do is you uh, you puncture a hole, a perfect circle inside uh -huh. of a paper. Right. And instead of looking at the sun, you turn around and you allow the shadow to hit the wall. Yeah. And the shadow on the wall will show a little oh, yeah. moony okay. inside the midst Have of that. Have you keeked your moony? I keeked my uh, kids uh, with a little moony. Brad, oh. uh, we love Brad. Yeah. We love Brad very, very much. A lot of people don't. Well, I, don't, I don't understand why. I mean, if they why. watch any of his keeks. Yes. But uh, he's done some good keeks. But for some reason, he's holding some type of bitterness towards me. You know, he, he, it's easy to scare, to spook Brad. You, you breathe in his general direction. He'll jump. This is very, very true. So I've kind of actually made it my aim to stop scaring him. Oh. Because, uh, boy, he gets scared real easily. But apparently, Anita... <laughs> I, you may not be old enough to remember Conrad Dobler. He was an offensive lineman for the St. Louis Cardinals. No. No. Well, he was known as an instigator. He would do things, never be called for a penalty, but he would always get somebody to, like, jump off sides or to throw a punch at him or something like that. Is always that instigating. No, that's Anita. Oh. She's instigating. She scared Brad today, and so now she's on the Keek hit list. <laughs> she is on the Keek Squad, not the Geek Squad. Which will be fun the because Geek Squad uh, is coming she, after Anita. She doesn't want to be interviewed. She doesn't want to be seen. You can't get her on video. Oh, we People will. Are getting a picture of her. Yeah, well. Every week we need to post a new picture of her here so everybody can see what she looks like. And they may even be actual pictures of her. Yeah. Because we could post anything. We could. We'll see. We'll see. So what you do this weekend? What did I do? Um, <clears throat> we went to the block. And uh, I teamed up with uh, Greg Elsasser, you know, Roman and George. They're coming out with a uh, fourth Roman and George. I don't know Looking if you knew that. Looking for support. Yep. Yeah. Look for support. And I, I, he is a neat guy. Yes. You know, the more and more that I hang out with him, I, I really like him. And uh, we ended up hanging out over at my house um, on Sunday. But we went out and we handed out some tracks. Uh, there was a guy that said, hey, I want to hang out with you guys. Do you mind if I come along? And we said, sure. And he said, how about those group of kids? And I go, oh, no, they, they hate Jesus. Look at them. They're, we don't want to. So he goes, oh, I'm going to go talk to them. He wouldn't talk to them. And as soon as he started talking, we didn't see the guy again. <laughs> <laughs> now, this was on yeah, Sunday? This was just a. <clears throat> that was actually on Friday night oh, okay. for the evangelism. But uh, I was just hanging out with Craig all weekend. Yeah. That's was great. Wow, very yep. good. I went out to, uh, this weekend was uh, Sermon on the Mount weekend where, oh. where folks go out and read. Matthew 5 through 7 in the open air. A lot of open air preachers have been birthed through what is called Project Ezra, where people go out and open up the Word of God and they read it aloud and they figure, well, you know what, if I could do that, I yeah. might be able to open my mouth and preach too. Now, did, did you start that? I, I see that on Facebook. Yeah, about uh, three years ago now. Oh, wow. There about. Uh, Dan Bodwin up in uh, San Jose is overseeing it now and doing a great job with it. So went out and read uh, Matthew 5 through 7 at the North Hollywood Metro Station, open aired a couple of times, and I ran into a lady, actually she didn't actually, I didn't actually run into her, but she approached me while I was preaching, hmm. and I'm pretty sure she was a demoniac. Whoa. Yeah. This is her picture. Oh, you have a picture of her. We have a picture of her. So she walks up, and she begins to immediately curse me and call me names, and she called me a clown. <laughs> and I said, well, I'm not wearing a red nose or anything. I don't feel like a clown. No, you're definitely a clown. And, uh, and she was cussing, and I said, hey, hey, could you please talk like a lady, have some self-respect? <laughs> and she said, what are you doing calling me a lady? And I'm thinking, uh-oh, North Hollywood, what have I done? I said, well, are you not a woman? No. Uh, and she looked like a woman to me. And I said, well, are you a man? No. Uh-oh. 
Well, what are you then? The Unabomber. I am the light! She oh. was the light. Wow. Even Satan appears as an angel yeah. of light. And that then, while I'm engaged with her, some guy comes running by me, uh, jogging, and he shakes my hand, throws his arms around me, and said, hey, I love you, brother. Thank you so much for being out here preaching the gospel. And I'm thinking, man, I am in the midst of a spiritual <laughs> war zone right now. <laughs> Look at that guy. <laughs> and then he just ran away. Just ran away. That was it. That was it. And then I had a penny heckler. You ever get these guys who will come up and they'll put a penny down next to your stool or, or on your box? Yeah, so I, it's still in my box. Can't buy anything with a penny. It actually costs more to make a penny than a penny's worth. Oh, does it? Yeah. <laughs> but I keep that as a token of the heckling I received that day. But it was a good day, though. It was just me and Michelle out there together and handed out a bunch of tracks. And, and uh, it was good. Now, do you... Do you predetermine when you're going to go out, like, way in advance? Do you say, hey, next Wednesday I'm going to be doing this, Thursday I'm going to be doing this, or do you go, you know what, it's a good time to go open air in right now? How, um, how, do, you, how do you do it? Both and. Uh, when it comes to open air, I, since we're so busy, busy down here, we spend so much time down here, I usually have to plan ahead where I'm going to go to open air preach, and that's usually yeah. Saturday morning. And then the, the times at the mall on Friday evening, those are planned out in advance. But, you know, if I see something like uh, – 31 cent scoop at 31 flavors. I'm driving through town to the 31 flavors looking for a line and I'm going to preach to them or, you know, so. Do you, do you have to talk yourself into it? Does your wife talk you into it? Does she try to hold you back? Do you try to hold yourself back? I mean, it wouldn't Maria be Maria never me not tries to... to hold me back. I try to hold myself back as much as possible. And you can't. Yeah, and there are times where I'll drive by a line two or three times, almost like a stalker. <laughs> right. <laughs> Yeah. And going, yeah, you know what, I really should preach that line. Ah, oh, no, they don't look like they'll receive it well. Oh, I'm going to, you know, upset the children getting their ice cream. Oh, i got to preach. Wow. So, and then sometimes I just blow it and I drive home with a bad excuse and kick myself out. Okay, so out. how often do you have that excuse where you go, oh, I'm going to go do this, and then you don't end up doing that? Not too often anymore because I've used the excuse so many times in the past, I, I really don't have any credibility with myself. And you know it doesn't stick, right? <laughs> Now, do you tell people for sure that you're going to be going out? Do you ask for prayer on Facebook, oh, yeah. or do you just go? No, well, I, uh, with uh, the times during the week when I plan to go, yeah, I let people know. I've got an online newsletter that I let people know if so they want to come out and join me. So those the moment times, though, do you let people know, hey, I'm thinking about doing this. I, I go. might on Twitter or Facebook say, hey, I'm about to pray to this line. And now they're going to hit you up and say, how did it go? Yeah. Right, okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, well, and that's part of the accountability. If I put out right. there, I'm about to preach to this line, right. oh, there is no going home at that point. Yeah. Because people are going to ask, well, how did it go? Well, you know, I kind of <laughs> like chicken out and went home. I, I pulled a Brad Snow. I didn't oh! Do it. Oh! <laughs> And Brad pulled a Mark Spence. Brad's, Brad's <laughs> working second chair today because Daniel comforts at Disneyland. What? Is that where he's at? Do you know they, they raised the price to like $90 a person now? Wow. Something like that. They raised that it is, 30%. That's, 30%. That's Brad's now going three times a day. Is, there, they is there a picture of Brad? Do we have a video of do Brad? We have the, do we have the bunker cam? Is that? There's, the, Brad. there's Brad. Brad wearing stripes on camera. We keep telling him don't wear stripes on camera. You make stripes look good. Stop that. <laughs> All right. Okay, hey, we got to get going. We've, we've spent a lot of time already. Yeah, well, yeah. you know, it's, I think that people are very interested in the whole open air yeah. preaching idea and the concept of what exactly is going through your mind. Give me a step by step blow because yeah. really we have a lot of open air preachers around us, you know, from uh, Brad and you to anybody and everybody else here at the ministry. But I, I have a feeling that there's a lot of people that watch us. Yeah. They go, man, anything you can give me that's out of the ordinary or something extra special on how you did it, how you talked yourself into it, uh, why you talked yourself out of it and how you deal with that, you know, I, I think is uh, golden. Well, the talking myself out of it is always sin. It's always fear of man. There's never a good, I've never argued myself out of open air preaching for a good reason. Mm. There's, there's never been a good reason to withhold the gospel from somebody. It's always good reasons for me. Uh, no. And they're all wrong. Okay. I understand all right, okay, they're all okay, wrong, okay, okay. Yeah. but boy, they well, sound good at the time. Yeah. Krispy Kreme donor right there. Ooh. Talk to these people. Krispy Kreme. Sometimes Krispy but, Kreme uh, wins. But I'm glad that I'm getting less capable of convincing myself yeah, not I to. Yeah, that, that, that's amazing. I, I, I take you on that for sure. Uh, kudos on you. Yeah, well, it's still a work in progress, though, because I still do it. I, I, I've, I've done it recently. 
You know, I've, oh, there's you know too many people in in that area that speak Spanish. I don't speak any Spanish. No one's going to understand me. So they're. I mean, I, I'm I'm constantly putting up straw men and tearing That's them down. That's a good reason why I oh, wouldn't do see, it. See, I'm not trying to add to your re repertoire. There's a lot of Spaniards out gonna... there today. I'm still trying to get someone from my church who speaks Spanish to go out with me to translate. Because so I'd love to start open air in the Hispanic uh, parts of our community. Wow. That would be really cool. Boy, I've preached quite a bit with an interpreter. And if you don't have a good interpreter, boy, it's really you hard. you really got to trust that interpreter. Oh, boy. I mean, can you imagine you're up there preaching the law and, and they're interpreting, you know, God has a wonderful plan for your life. Just pray this prayer after me. And you see all these people coming forward, and you think it's because of the gospel you're preaching, but your interpreter just did an altar call or something. And yeah. <laughs> you, know, you know our gospel track, Are You Good Enough to Get to Heaven, our yeah. most thorough mm -hmm. gospel track. Well, we had somebody pro bono uh, translate that into Spanish something like 15, 16, 17 years ago. And they included in there that you must be baptized in order to go to heaven. They, just, they just threw that in there, and we were selling that you know, for probably two years or so before we finally Ooh. caught that. Whoa. So. That's yeah. craziness. craziness. Speaking of craziness, uh, as you well know, Christians are being persecuted all over the planet. That they are. Yes. Um, I think it was Ray that mentioned uh, that we'll probably never see a, a Fox's Book of Martyrs for Atheists. <laughs> probably never see that book. That's good. Uh, but uh, that book is being added to day in and day out by Christians around the world who are suffering and dying for their faith. And... Uh, Shame on me, this was new to me when I learned it today, but there is an area um, called Nuba, mountains in Nuba, and, uh, you know, it's slipping my mind what country it's in right now. Sudan. Sudan, thank you. And uh, the Sudanese government, uh, Muslim extremist government, are killing by the thousands uh, the Nubas. <laughs> and uh, so there is a push to get the word out about uh, this people group who are being slaughtered for their faith in Christ. And uh, we're going to share with you a video real quick here and then talk a little bit about the persecuted church. Take a look. During the 1940s, Nazi Germany committed genocide. They systematically murdered millions of people through ethnic cleansing. At the end of the war, nations came together with one voice crying out, never again. But never again is happening again. Right now, the brutal Islamic regime of Sudan is slaughtering its own people in the Nuba Mountains. This is genocide. In the Nuba Mountains now, the children are killed, the women, the bombing is, uh, the civilian is targeted, it's the war of horror. They're killing people. Sudanese dictator Omar al-Bashir is an indicted war criminal. He has targeted Sudan's largest Christian community for extinction. The only reason why they're being exterminated is because they don't subscribe to the, to the same stripe of religion as Khartoum. It amazes me how the U.S. and the international community is able to tolerate these killers for so long, yet aggressively pursue other villains who have not killed one one-hundredth for what, whose deaths Omar al-Bashir and his regime are responsible. Nuba people have fear. They don't know what is going to happen. This is a fundamentally evil government. They are evil. They're fundamentally evil. Evil. You have three options. Ignorance, apathy, or action. The silence of the church in the West is absolutely incredible. And when I think of what's taking place to believers in that part of the country, and yet I hear total, complete silence. Take action now at SaveTheNuba.com. These are not statistics. These are real people. Three million lives and counting, when will we say enough? Lives depend on your action. SaveTheNuba.com So I grossly underestimated the number. Three million, not thousands, not tens of thousands, not hundreds of thousands, but three million people slaughtered for naming the name of Christ. Men, women, children, children, non-combatants, and the primary way they're doing that is through bombing. Bombing their villages, bombing their towns, bombing the people. And just literally blowing them up because they follow Christ. You know, the Iranian president in 2007 uh, said these words, I will stop Christianity in this country. 
The president is saying that I will stop this. I will stop Christianity and he's going to do whatever it takes in his country, in that country over there. I was just outside Sudan, uh, just really? south of Sudan in a country called Uganda. Oh, it, yeah, yeah. They, they border. My nephew's from there. And we had started a... Uh, Sudanese refugee uh, orphanage. Uh, we re we reached out to them inside that camp. Uh, we had some uh, missionaries leave our church and go over there. And I went over there and I visited them and I did some uh, some teachings, a series of teachings inside. We started a Bible school to try to reach out to them. And we had a group of people that are part of the LRA, which are based out of Southern Sudan, the Lord's Resistance Army. And they had gone down into our camp. And they had killed uh, a couple guards that we had that were protecting uh, our missionaries. Wow. Uh, I mean, you hire them for pennies. $200 a year is the average income there in northern Uganda. I could not believe uh, not just the living conditions, but the continual fear that grips the heart of these people that are not Christians. And then we come across the Christians that are going back and forth into Sudan trying to grab hold of their family members to try to pull them down over to this uh, camp that we had set up, risking their own lives. Mm. And these Christians were filled with joy. Mm. And, I, and I was floored and I was embarrassed of my own Christian walk. And me complaining about the, this food that they were serving us. And then realizing that they're giving me food that they were going to eat with as their family and spread that out over the week. And the father was going to fast and the mother was going to fast for the next two, three days so that I could have this food. Wow. And I think, man, Mark, you and your Americanized Christianity is deplorable. It's despicable. It's it's disgusting, you know. And I, I, I don't think that we could really see what persecution is really like. I heard somebody once say that persecution and martyrdom is stronger now than it's ever been yeah. in the history of Christianity. You More know, been um, happening now than over the last two thousand years. And 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 I, I simply don't know that it, it's foreign to me. Here yeah. we are, you know, we sit inside of a, our comfortable little studio with air conditioning, and we tell people um, about how to answer questions concerning Christianity. Not that there's anything wrong with that. Obviously, no. this is the allotment which God has given us. But we're not worried so, about the door being broken down. We're, we're not. not being worried about being drug drug off to our death. We're not uh, because of doing this show. We we live yeah. in in safety. Yeah, you know, you hear people say, "Hey, I would be willing to die for Christ." Really. Yeah, and, and when I see videos like that, I have to ask myself that question. Really? Tony, mm -hmm. are you really willing to die yeah. for Christ? Uh, Franklin Graham, uh, Eddie pointed this out to me this morning, Franklin Graham has actually called for the bombing of Sudan uh, to protect those uh, innocent victims wow. uh, in, uh, in the Nuba area. And, uh, you know, I, I haven't read the full account, but I wonder, you know, if he's standing alone mm. among other Christian leaders. You know, wow. who are just... He's bold. He is very bold. Yeah. yeah. You know, I, I think that when push comes to shove at a time, perhaps, that um, anybody can really die for Christ. It's that time where you go, well, are you willing to live for Christ? Yeah. Are you willing to die to yourself yeah. today and live for Christ? Are you willing to say, I must decrease so that he alone must increase in my life, do whatever it takes? You know, if uh, you come across an individual who says, you know what, my, my eyesight, as precious as it is, it's not my eyes. They don't belong to me. They belong to him. I've been purchased with a price. Yeah. So God, if you're willing, if you want to, if for whatever reason known only to you, you want to take away my eyesight in order to live the rest of this life as a blind individual, physically, not spiritually, mm -hmm. you have my permission to do it. God, I, I joyfully surrender my eyesight knowing who it is that's taking them from me. Yeah. Whatever it is in our life that we're unwilling to give up, for Christ at that moment is our God. Oh, yeah. Then there's no way around it. You know, and I've, I've had to ask myself about that, uh, that very thing about hobbies and things that I like to do, foods I like to eat, you know, people I want to hang out with. If, if anything in my life is so important that I will not give it up to follow Christ closer, Whatever I'm willing to give up is my God at that yeah. moment. I am worshiping that person. I am worshiping that, that thing. I am worshiping that place. I'm worshiping that, that behavior or activity. 
whatever wow. it is, if I'm, if, I'm, if I'm weighing, what do I do now? Do I open my Bible or do I watch this game? If I pick the game at that moment, the game is my God. Oh, wow. I love sports. Yeah, I do too. I love sports. Dodgers are doing Sometimes good. too much. Dodgers are doing real good. Best, uh, see what you're doing to me? It's causing me to stumble right now. Best record in all of baseball, Los Angeles Dodgers. Brad doesn't like sports, so he's free from that idol. Makes me worry about him a little bit. Brad Snow. Brad Snow. All right, let's take a deep breath and let's see what our brothers at crownrights.org are up to today as they're trying to capture that sunrise in the morning. <laughs> this is our spot. Right there, we just missed a turn. What are you doing? I thought you could go out the road this way. Do you see a road over there? No, not now. Watch the ditch! <laughs> I did. Don't go snow, don't go right, go straight. Let's do this. Let's do... Gladiator shot. Fucking me, I hope I hurry you up, bro. Hey, hand me my coffee. It's seeable. It's gotta be seeable. It's gotta be something to like, oh, okay, so I can apply this right now. We got enough. You don't think we were blocking the shot, do you? No. It's up too much. It's a gladiator shot. We're hardly in it. Gladiator. Oh. Hey, um, something I want to encourage our, our viewers to do. You'll notice there at the end of the video that uh, they were gracious enough to put 180movie. Dot com That's great. Up there. So if you're making YouTube videos of any kind, we would encourage you to put 180movie.com up there. Also, 180prolife.com, which is the website that Brad Snow has created because he's not watching sporting events. He has time to create remarkable websites. Yes. 180prolife.com is a website for the 180 conference, October 20th at Calvary Chapel in San Diego. My uh, my wife handed out a uh, 180 DVD today to a plumber that came to our house uh, only after she got into a conversation uh, with uh, him about God. I called home and I said, uh, my boy answered, and I said, hey, Noah, um, what's mom doing? She's, she's talking to the plumber, you know, and I go, oh, okay, great. Um, is she almost done? I, I can't tell, but I Make think he's trying to, hour. I, I think he's trying to get away, you know, try to, no, he didn't say that, but um, she, she, she capitalizes on all the opportunities she can when somebody comes to the door because she's a stay at home mom. Yeah. All right. We are going to get to a question today. Wow. We've, we've talked about good stuff today. Yeah. Which gives us plenty of stuff to talk about tomorrow. Uh, you know, in fact, I, I promised Dave, and Dave, if you're watching, we're going to get to your question tomorrow um, about professing Christians using the Bible to justify abortion. I want to make sure we have plenty of time to talk about that and smack some professing Christians around a little bit with the Bible. So I scared Brad. I scared Brad? The Brad jumped. Yeah. It Brad jumped. All right, so this one's from Sean. Love the show. I read in the Word about how, as Christians, we are not supposed to keep repeating the same prayer and repetition as the heathens do in Matthew 6, 7. But what does the Word say about making others' prayers your own as in prayers from a book? I want to have a better prayer life because I know it is something I am lacking and would be grateful to any help you can give me on the subject. Well, you know, heathen think that... By their many words, <clears throat> God is now almost obligated to answer their prayer. Yeah. The way they want their prayer to be answered. Right. If I keep saying this over and over and over and over again, and it becomes a works-oriented righteousness, which is a horrible stench in the nostrils of God. You know, so it's not by our many words in which we hear. You know, Jesus gave us uh, somewhat of an outline on how to pray when the disciples said, teach us to pray. Uh, you know, I think it's been almost 20 years. Uh, it's, it, I think it's been almost 20 years since my pastor taught me how to pray. And he used the whole acts, mm -hmm. uh, adoration, confession, thanksgiving, supplication. Right. And I tend to follow that when I have uh, longer spurts of prayer, when I, when I know I'm going to be here for a while. And I'll begin to, if you want to come up with a to-do list, enter into prayer with God. And then just have a pen and a paper ready because, boy, you are reminded mm. from crazy outside sources. Oh, yeah, I need to call that person. I said that I was going to call them yesterday. I haven't called them. And you want to call them right now. Just make a little note mm -hmm. and call them later. I think uh, what has helped me the most, I heard somebody say, 
if you're always at a, uh, at a standstill, you don't know what to pray, and you want to pray God's perfect will, what do you do? I pray in the Word of God. Yeah. So as I'm going through the Word, I want the Word to go through me. I'm simply praying it in. <clears throat> you know, hey, don't be like the heathen who think that by their many words that they're heard. God, I pray that you'd help me to not be like the heathen who think by their many words that they're going to be heard. Sink that in, and I just go on. So I pray in continually. So it's hard to go past a paragraph without praying that in because I've made it such a practice yeah. inside my life. Excellent. Uh, Matthew Henry wrote a book called uh, Methods of Prayer. And uh, Alliance for Confessing Evangelicals has a website up, and I believe it's MatthewHenryPrayer.org or something like that. If you just Google Matthew Henry Methods of Prayer, the site oh. will likely come up. And that book, you know, written hundreds of years ago, is basically taking Scripture and uh, putting it in first-person form, and you're literally praying Scripture. And so I use that as a source. Uh, love this book, oh, Val Valley it. of Vision, uh, Puritan Prayers. I'll read one of these in the morning. And then this came out not too long ago, At the Throne of Grace. It was actually put together by his kids, uh, John MacArthur. It oh, is, really? It, it is the text of his prayers in the pulpit before uh, his congregation. Wow. Yeah. And so what I've done is I've gone into the book and I've, I've uh, changed all of the uh, third person, you know, plural pronouns to first person personal pronouns. And then I go back and I will read these prayers and they're all scripture based. Did you buy that? Uh, no, it came free from uh, Grace to You. Can I have it? Um, see your Freely you've received? <laughs> Till tomorrow. Thank you. Be encouraged, strengthened, and unafraid. It's mine. I'm looking for a book. For questions about On the Box with Ray Comfort, Thank you. or to submit questions for future shows, please email on the box at livingwaters.com. That's on the box at livingwaters.com. On the Box with Ray Comfort is an outreach of Living Waters. For more resources to inspire and equip you to fulfill the Great Commission, check out livingwaters.com or call toll-free 1-800-437-1893. Now go and preach the gospel.